Well hello, it's Sheena again and this time I'm going to show you how to make these, well what first part of how to make these these books I've been playing with and I, I love them, I think they look well cool and um, many people have put requests in since I've been making these little babies um, but I really don't want to give them away, how bad is that? Now um, I think they look like leather and they look nice and pretty posh to me, pretty classy like leather but they're not leather, it's faux leather and I'm going to show you the first part so for this video I'm going to show you exactly how to make this the cover for the book we'll do another video and I'll show you how to put the book together but as you can see this one here um, I think that's really nice, I think it's a really nice gift you could make them for men as well maybe use a different um, folder because I've used my embossing folders on here but a different pattern, there's plenty to choose from and um, a different fabric lining but as you can see, I think they're really, really pretty and cheap as chips to make, which is even better. I think um, for the crafter, that's their ultimate mission, to make something that looks a lot more expensive than it is. So, okay, we'll get cracking. So, believe it or not, this is what you need. And um, when I said it's cheap as chips, I wasn't lying. Um, I've got to start an A5 piece of craft card this is the crafters companion now i know this technique works brilliantly with that so if you need it just go to crafters companion website um obviously creating craft tv will sell that as well so um it's just a perfect weight it's what i've used so i can guarantee the results with this one if you've got your own have a try that's all i'm going to say now so you've got your craft cards really good heavy weight i think it's about 300 gsm but it looks nothing like leather it's thick and cord like as it should be the thing that's going to transform it, another cheap as chip product, is this. If you pop down to your local chemist, you can get a bottle of glycerine. Right, this cost me 129, 125, something like that, but it certainly was less than one pound thirty. And you've got um, a good amount in here. I'm two hundred mils loads because you're going to dilute it as well so you're going to get loads and loads of um, booklets out for your money the other thing you need is a spray bottle now the amount of glycerin to pour into here I would say it's about I put about that in what's that about oh is that about a sixth about down there about a sixth seventh don't need it many stronger than that okay so a lot more water than glycerin um, just play around with it depending on what your cards like but I know that, that this kind of um, proportion works great with the crafters companion craft card and then give it a good shake now the reason we've added glycerin to the mix is that the glycerin is going to it attract moisture it's going to get into the card quicker than just water and it messes around with the fibres and it changes it from something that is like you know card like to something that looks much more leather like and I'm going to show you how to do that so be really liberal with this Right, so really spritz that on and um, get it really wet and then just gently massage the, the um, product into the surface. What you're doing is just encouraging those fibres to open up. So you don't want to be rubbing because you don't want to rub the surface off. Just gently, there's a little bit of encouragement there. And then you can see it's darkening. You'll see when it's starting to get in there, it goes dark. It's not just water sitting on the surface. We'll turn it over and then we'll give it a really good liberal spritz again. Um, I would have some um, kitchen paper at hand as well. Oh, the other good thing as well is glycerin. You'll find it in things like moisturising creams and hand creams. So your hands are lovely and soft and supple after you've done this. Um, the chemists sell it because also it's in um, like cough mixtures and things. Again, it's thick, it's coating, it's very viscous and it, um, it, it does attract moisture. So it gets into the fibres and then it attracts more fi more moisture to get into the fibres with them. And it, like I say, it messes up the, the composition of the cord much quicker than water alone would. And it stays in there and, and it keeps it moist and supple. So can you see how it's run really dark now? Now, pretty soon, you're going to start scrunching this up. Um, you can see already it's starting to be a bit more bendy okay I'm going to do this in real time as well because it, it's important to see how long it does take so um, we're not going to fast forward or come back to any bits here just you know I would do two at a time because when you think for every one of these A5 pieces of cord you've got the cover for a, a, a book that looks like leather so you know <laughs> you've got a good return on your time so 
right we'll say that about there because I can feel now it's starting to get really bendy rather than, than, than creasy it's all technical jargon isn't it like I say so what I'm going to do now is get it and scrunch it up you do this too soon um, it, you, it'll not work as well it'll be still too tough and the moisture won't have got into the card really scrunch it up and then flatten it out again but be careful because it will tear when it's dry it's tough and we've got ways of making it tougher but um, you see look it looks like a chamois leather to me it looks like I'm about to go and wash the car not going to happen right so spray it again same thing again get the moisture in there I actually have found that there's one side of the card that actually looks a little bit better than the other when it's done there's one side that seems the fibre seem to be a little bit smoother notice how I'm not rubbing and rubbing I don't want to make it fluffy see how that side looks see it looks um, a smoother surface than this seems more absorbent that side so get some more in there and then do it again so you'll find it's easier to scrunch up this time you're trying to make new creases if you can that's the object is just get as many small little creases get the cord to move and break up the fibers and absorb that product best you can now again when you unravel it be careful because you don't want to tear it it will tear if you if you care if you're not careful at this stage right that's almost about ready maybe do it one more time but like I see you, you want to stop when it's starting to if it starts to get a little bit too fragile you don't want to end up with a, just a pile of pulp okay now I don't want to put any more moisture in that because what I'm going to do now you can leave it like that and, and let it dry but what I want to do is I want to put it through um, a, a folder, an embossing folder and I find, well my folders are really nice thick deeply embossed so you get a really good impression plus with the card being um, damp and broken down really you get an even deeper impression when you pop it through the folder so for example what I'm going to do is if I've got this folder here um, so you can see there, you can see it's one of mine um, this is um, basically it's just a 5x7 so it's going to be perfect for that and it's called Flying Beauties so we'll pop that out of there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the embossing folder the, the machine twice so if I have it that, if you have the word in face up that's the side that's going to be embossed so say I want the front of the book I'm going to try and do it so I put it through twice so the join is going to be roughly on the spine I'm not going to measure because anybody who knows me I'm allergic to the measuring don't think my brain does that stuff does the plain stuff but not the measuring stuff so we'll pop that in there close that and I'm going to pop that through the machine now just as it is just have a little bit of tissue ready just in case there's some moisture that comes out and I'll see you in a sec so this has just been embossed this is what's, what it looks like it started to dry already under the, these lights but you can see it's gone a bit mottled but um, look at how flexible it is but look at how nicely embossed it is as well so what I would do is actually I put them over the radiator um, I put, fold them like that over the radiator on the spine and it just helps them dry in place so you know an hour or two on the radiator and they're going to be good to go um, ready to play with and then you're going to end up with something that looks like that oh she's not going to change pattern just notice a different pattern <laughs> yes that'll be really that'll be really interesting if you manage to do that but um look see it looks again like a chamois leather it looks like when you buy them ready to you know to use but look at how the compositions don't completely change from you now it's all it's not wet but it, look at how flexible it is that's what we want but i want to show you another little um alternative before we go and go ahead and colour this well yeah um your four leather is still wet if you take some of your distress inks and use some different colours maybe a little bit of um, vintage photo and just pop it over like this the creases um, I don't want to put too much on at this stage it's going to even um, accentuate more that leathery kind of look um, maybe pop a little bit of spice marmalade if I want to make it warmer um, I've, I've used greens I've used um, you know the warmer greens in the in the distressing range um, just to but what, what I'm going to do as well is um, just spritz it again because I don't want it too intense that colour and let it just smush in with the ink and the ink is um, 
it's going to want to move and, and move into the fibres a little bit and have it be less of a distinctive line on there. And then when you've when it's done that a little bit, you just squish it again. And you can do that two or three times and pick out different creases every time, re-ink it and it'll bring out different areas. See how it's gone. Because the craft card is going to look much more dramatic than it will when it's dried. Um, it'll the craft card being brown, it'll mute it down a lot. So that's another one thing you can do before you then go and emboss it in your machine. Now I'm just going to wipe that up there. I just want to show you what the folder looked like. You shouldn't have water pouring out your folder if you have. You've just, it's been too wet. I mean you saw it wasn't ringing wet. There's a little bit of moisture that you just need to wipe off your folder. And I mean I put this through my e app, which is an electric machine. So you can imagine um, you really don't want water pouring out. So just be careful that it's not too wet when you do that. Okay, right, so this one here that's done. Now to bring out the um, the colour a little bit there, we can use a little bit of. I'd rather than using straight ahead away with the um, the the ink pad this time. I'm just going to use um, a bit of cut and dry foam and go ahead and pick up some of these areas here, just as you know it would normally with your card. And you can see. So if you've already got those creases in the the leather look where it's wet, and then you're doing this on top, you're adding even more depth and interest to it. You see how that's picking out all of those, that detail. And you can use, you know, again, I would like to, I would use predominantly a brown colour like walnut and vintage, but then you can um, you warm it up with something, I'm going to use a little bit of spice marmalade on it, or you can use a, a warm green or, um, you know, a yellowy colour, anything like that. I haven't tried a bluey tint yet, but it's just, it's its not going to change. It's always going to be brown like leather, but it's just going to give it a nice, a little tint. So can you see it's dark? I mean, it looks really effective. And we've got a little trick to make it look even better because we haven't sealed it yet. And we haven't strengthened it. And you've got two options. I'm going to tell you ahead of the game what we're going to do next. We're going to use either um, stick and spray from Crafter's Companion which will seal it because it's a spray varnish and it'll give it some shine like natural leather or we're going to use, not stick and spray, backtrack, spray and shine from Crafter's Companion which is a varnish um, so spray and shine, that is, I will say it again, spray and shine um, which will, as I said, it's a spray varnish and it'll make it look like more shine, a little bit shine like leather but it's also going to seal it and protect it and make it you know waterproof to a degree so it's all about now toughening this up because if you want to know but you don't want it to fall apart in a day or two all right that looks pretty good i think and then we'll pop a little bit of the i like the um the vintage photo is a lot warmer than walnut so you know, I would say you'd need a little bit more of a warmer tone like your marmalade in if you use the walnut. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? I have to say, I think this is a really cool technique. And from the social media um, sites, it looks like you like it as well. So, yay! And I love the fact that it's dead cheap to do. Once you've invested in, you know, some card, and the biggest expense is your embossing folders, so you know, try it with whatever you've got. But obviously, you know, I could suggest some really nice Sheena folders. And if you want any of this stuff, go to my website. It's um, www.sheena.tv. You can't buy it there, but there's links and where you can get the stuff. But there's also galleries and uh, things for TV shows and um, workshops and things. That looks well cool. I'm going to dry that with my heat tool and then we're going to um, shine it up. That's dry now. I've just to, to fix the distress ink and just to, to get ready to any rid, oh, hello, rid of any surface moisture. Yes, all the letters were there, but not necessarily words. Now I've popped this in my spray booth, I like to call it. It's a plastic folder, and you can see it's, it's got stuff mounted up from years of use. This is the stuff I was saying to use Crafter's Companion Spray and Shine. Fab stuff. It's um it's it's out it's gonna do exactly that, but it's also gonna seal, protect, strengthen. So the other thing you could use is if you have any Bindex um Pebio product, it's a white acrylic and you brush it on and um 
and that will get into the fibre, it'll plasticise the coat, the surface as well and it'll um, it'll make it less, a little bit less shiny. You could use the gloss if you want it shinier. So that's here, the Pebio Bindex, don't dilute it, you brush it on with a big brush, it's white, it'll dry clear, leave it, that will also strengthen it and protect it, or spray and shine. So now, I'm not worried about getting a perfect, normally when you're spraying, you know, a box or a flat surface, you want to make sure you've got nice, even, gorgeous, perfect coverage. With this, it doesn't really matter as much because it's a, it's kind of a rough and fibrous surface anyway. Now, if you look across and if you have got any fibres that are sitting up, just push them down like this. Use your finger. It feels like kind of toffee-ish, but, you know, I'm not worried because this is... I don't want it super super shiny you know when you, you wouldn't normally touch something like this when it's just being sprayed but I, I don't care I want to get that into the surface of the card I think that just looks absolutely I tell you what you know it's been a while since I've been I was on a mission to come up with the best full leather look I possibly could for the cheapest price I possibly could and I've got to say I'm pretty pretty chuffed with this um, I think a lot of people will be getting um, little handmade books for Christmas, birthdays, etc. this year. But I think it's something that everybody's going to want because you know what? They don't look like a, um, a bit of a you know, cheap and cheerful gift. I think they look really like you would have you paid quite a bit of money in a decent shop for them. Now that's as far as we're going to with go with this tutorial. That's what you've, we've just made together. I think that's corking. Every one I do looks different because of using a slightly different accessory kind of colour. I'm liking Spiced Marmalade with Vintage Photo. Good combination. And uh, then we're going to cover another tutorial on how to put the book together. And believe me, it has to be easy with, get this, um, I like one bit of measuring because I can't do that. Anybody who knows me will know this. Um, and I'll see you, see you next time.